Hello and welcome. My name is Mike Miner and I work as an educational consultant for Pennsylvania's Training and Technical Assistance Network and serve as a contributing partner to the Multi-Tiered System of Supports initiative. Today we will be discussing some of the most important factors associated with informing instruction and intervention decision making within and across the tiers. The mission of the Pennsylvania Training and Technical Assistance Network is to support the efforts and initiatives of the Bureau of Special Ed and to build the capacity of local education agencies to serve students who receive special education services. Our goal for each child is to ensure individualized education program teams begin with the general education setting with the use of supplementary aids and services before considering a more restrictive environment. Pennsylvania's multi-tiered system of support is a standards-aligned comprehensive school improvement framework for enhancing both academic and behavioral health outcomes for all students. All means all. In Pennsylvania, response to intervention refers to the methodology that is used to determine how slow is slow and how low is low as an alternative to ability achievement discrepancy within the specific learning disability determination process. Pennsylvania's MTSS model represents an integrated system, meaning that cross-disciplinary teams use a problem-solving process to facilitate shared ownership for achieving academic and behavioral goals using a continuum of evidence-based practices and reliable and valid data sources. All students are afforded access to standards-aligned core literacy, mathematics, and STEM instruction delivered within the context of culturally responsive practices, positive behavioral supports, and family engagement. There are key components that form the foundation of PA's MTSS framework. If a well-articulated, well-designed tiered system is in place, schools should realize efficient, effective, and sustainable outcomes. For a long time in education, we have worked in silos. MTSS represents an integration of systems because even though we may have different foci, we can rely on the same components, like today's focus, data-informed decision-making. If we work together, we can be in a process of continuous improvement using data and match to needs for everyone. In PA, we endorse the adoption and implementation of a basic three-tier model. There are some things that are good for all students, some things that are good for some students, and then there are some things that are good for just a few students. We want practitioners to think of tiers as evidence-based resources and supports that exist along a continuum of intensity. Tiers do not refer to students. If we implement core and supplemental evidence-based practices with fidelity, then most students should be responding adequately and reaching intended academic, social, and behavioral benchmarks. Finally, we want schools to keep working toward integrating academic and behavioral data using a problem-solving orientation and process. Problem-solving across the tiers is inherent within an effective MTSS model. Layers of teams assume responsibility for defining problems, analyzing gaps, implementing solutions, and evaluating whether those solutions were success successful at the system, grade, and individual student levels. Today, the focus of this quick pick is to discuss ways that teams may enhance their decision-making process in order to realize and sustain positive outcomes. We will review the importance of having a continuum of reliable and valid data sources, effective teaming structures, and the role that clinical judgment and interpretation play when using the data to inform the instructional matching and student response to intervention processes. In an MTSS framework, decision-making is informed by multiple sources of data at all levels the system, the grade, and the student levels. Universal screening and progress monitoring measures are essential because they predict and help us offset risk and are sensitive to incremental growth and response to intervention respectively. In addition, practitioners will need mastery and diagnostic measures to inform strengths and degree of deficiency in the content areas of reading, writing, and mathematics and behavioral health. We recommend that when students are exhibiting increased risk, the teams look at each of these areas using a variety of measures. One of the teams that I consulted with decided that they needed more options 
for literacy at the middle and high school levels. They used PVOS data to conduct initial screening, but didn't have any diagnostic tools to determine degree of deficiency in instructional match or progress monitoring tools to regularly assess RTI. The team decided to acquire the test of word reading efficiency to monitor the progress of students who need additional intervention in word attack skills and the test of silent contextual reading fluency to measure reading comprehension skill development. This measure gives them regular insight into whether a student is improving in the areas of word identification, word meaning, word building, and sentence structure skills. In order for teams to be maximally effective with data interpretation and instructional matching, teams should be comprised of both content and behavioral health experts, as well as data interpretation experts. This means that teams who represent the systems, grade, and individual level should have cross-disciplinary representation. It's also recommended that teams meet regularly and adopt data protocols to facilitate effective and efficient problem solving. As indicated, system level teams often meet monthly to review building level academic and behavioral outcomes to monitor whether their MTSS framework is operating as efficiently and effectively as possible. Grade level teams often meet two times per month to monitor whether most students are responding to core instruction and make timely changes to core instruction as is needed. Individual problem solving teams often meet every six to eight weeks to discuss whether the intensive instructional and intervention diet that is in place for a smaller percentage of students is working. These teams look at progress monitoring and other measures to make decisions. Please take a minute to think about the teaming structures you currently have in place and how closely they mirror recommended guidelines. Take a look at this chart. This resource from a high school in Colorado provides you with additional guidelines for establishing layers of teams and for meeting and what to accomplish during those meetings. Do each of your teams fulfill these responsibilities? The importance of having multiple layers of teams who work together to pool their expertise and efforts cannot be underscored enough. Building great and individual problem solving teams can work in a vacuum, but this does not usually re result in an efficient and effective service delivery system. Now let's review a math example of sophisticated decision making to inform instructional intensification across the tiers in the integration of behavioral assessment. This school's core MTSS team decided that PSSA math scores indicated that there was a need to enhance core and supplemental math instruction for all students. So they adopted and implemented Spring Math, a comprehensive assessment and instruction intervention system for mathematics that helps teachers augment their core math instruction. When shown to the grade levels, grade three was interested in piloting Spring Math. One of the third grade classroom teachers conducted the Spring Math benchmark and found most of her students needed class-wide math intervention aligned to the goal skill, the goal skill based upon the Spring Math benchmark assessment. After conducting class-wide intervention for a period of three to four weeks, Roughly 15 minutes per day, there was a handful of students who needed additional small group instruction intervention at the sub-skill level based upon mastery measurement. The teacher consulted the individual problem-solving team because two of the three students were also observed to have attentional and self-monitoring skill deficiencies. The school psychologist administered the SSIS screener. Both students fell in the significantly at risk range, and it was determined that these two students would set incremental math goals with the teacher and earn privileges for reaching their individual go goals both at home and school. The families were supported by the team and assisted with the development of a reward system at home and were given access to the spring math system in order to see their child's response to weekly intervention in math. As indicated earlier, universal screening is a cornerstone of tiered systems. However, there are important things to remember about screening data. Teams should always check the adequacy of screening data. Do the screening measures align with grade level learning goals and give reliable and valid estimates of student performance that predict future success? Does the screening data reflect the overall health of core instruction and where to make adjustments? Are we making adjustments to third grade math instruction or just to some classrooms? Does the screening data help us to allocate resources more effectively and efficiently if we know that a particular grade level is struggling versus all grade levels? Let's see how this is done. This decision-making chart can help teams discern between class-wide and grade-level problems. Teams begin by seeing if the class median score was below the risk criterion. If it was not, 
The team is just going to focus on the few students in a given classroom who would benefit from supplemental intervention. If the answer is yes, the class-wide intervention will be needed. The team is also going to explore how many other classrooms are having difficulties. If more than half of the classrooms in a given grade level are having difficulties getting students to benchmark status, then teams should examine other sources of grade level data that will help pinpoint where and why students are underachieving or presenting as at risk. Based upon curriculum-based measurement, Keyshawn's performance is well below the expected level of functioning. However, how are Keyshawn's peers doing? We can see that Keyshawn's performance is relatively consistent with that of his peers. At the very least, the team would recommend a class-wide intervention to improve the quality of Tier 1 instruction for all students in the class. In this class, Keyshawn's performance is well below that of his peers. What would you recommend as a member of the team? This data does not suggest that there is a class-wide problem. It suggests that the health of Tier 1 is adequate. It also suggests that Keyshawn is responding inadequately to core instruction and would benefit from intensifying core instruction and mobilizing supplemental intervention matched to his needs. So how might data teams structure a data team meeting? The SURF form can be used by grade level teams to assess how many students are responding to Tier 1 and how many students needed more differentiation during core instruction in addition to supplemental intervention. Grade level teams can use this form to capture, ev capture evidence-based practices they're going to use to improve outcomes during whole and small group instruction and intervention. Ideally, teams would compete, complete this form following the collection and analysis of grade level benchmark data in the fall, winter, and spring. For example, a first grade team might find that only 50% of students met the winter benchmark for nonsense word fluency and set a goal that 100% of students will meet the benchmark by spring as a function of implementing advanced phonological awareness and systematic whole group phonics instruction and additional small group phonics instruction and intervention for all students whose performance fell below the 25th percentile. There is a section on the form to list who these students are and when they will begin to receive supplemental intervention using which evidence-based practice and how often their progress will be monitored and by whom. The SURF form can be found on the patent website under the MTSS initiative in the live binders. We will be highlighting that location before the end of the quick pick. The SURF form also helps teams stay focused through the process by providing talking points. You can see examples under typical prompts. The team initiated problem solving tool is also available to help teams work through the problem solving process. I will pause so you can look at each of the steps. This is an example of a completed TIPS2 form. During data meetings, teams should re rely upon easily interpretable graphs and visuals. For example, the upper triangles indicate that less than 50% of students are responding to core reading instruction. The second visual shows to what extent students are moving out of tiers over time. No matter the tiers, students are not moving. This suggests that the instruction and intervention provided within all tiers is inadequate relative to student needs. The third visual shows RTI for one student. So how did the student do? Over this 18-week intervention period, she achieved 106 words read correct with three errors on second grade reading passages. Her targeted rate of improvement was 3.11 words read correct per minute per week. Her actual or attained rate of improvement is 3.52 words read correct per minute per week. Wow, this student had an ambitious growth rate. Instruction and intervention resulted in her acceleration. In order to assess response to intervention, we need many data points to reliably assess whether kids are responding or not. It doesn't matter if, there are, if they are some risk or very much at risk. We can't gauge whether our instruction is working or not with just three data points. Teams need to ensure that there are five to seven data points to get a trend in response. 
8 to 14 data points to gauge whether instruction and intervention should be further intensified or remain the same, and 15 to 20 data points to inform how low is low and how slow is slow relative to the SLD eligibility decision-making process. Take a look at this chart. If we are only monitoring students every two to three weeks, how many weeks does it take to get a sense of whether the student is responding to intervention? 2.5 months. If we are monitoring students on a weekly basis, how many weeks does it take to get a good sense of how they are responding to intervention? Eight weeks. We can get a good sense of trend and response with eight to 14 data points and it is recommended that we make decisions about whether to proceed with SLD eligibility determination when we have 15 to 20 data points. However, if we are sensing a student is not responding adequately, then we can't wait to go to eligibility determination. We may need to collect data points more frequently. There are charting systems that can help organize progress monitoring data and helps problem solving teams at all tiers evaluate rate of improvement data. We take all of the students' progress monitoring probes and enter them into a statistical equation to see what the student's rate of improvement, or ROI, is at Tier 2 and Tier 3. You can use a system like ChartDog that is free through Intervention Central. This will help us calculate ROI using the ordinary least squared method. ChartDog helps practitioners assess how low is low and how slow is slow with relative ease and accuracy. Here are links to recordings we have created to help practitioners use ChartDog and calculate rate of improvement. This will support your database decision making for students receiving Tier 2 and Tier 3 supports. Enhancing team-based decision making toward effective tiered systems is a process and product that requires time, persistence, professional collaboration, and skill. Multiple layers of integrated teams have to be judicious about what data sources to administer and or review how to analyze and interpret data accurately and within context, and most importantly, how to build the capacity to use data to inform evidence-based instruction and intervention matched to needs in real time toward desired outcomes for students. For more information, we also encourage you to explore the MTSS initiative page and resources, including our live binders for reading, write, writing, mathematics, word generation, and MTSS boot camps. To access the live binders on the MTSS initiative page, click Access Information on the right-hand side where you see our list of live binders in orange. Click on the binder that interests you and just enter the corresponding access key. Here are a list of the resources used to support the development of this QuickBank. Additional resources used to support the development of this QuickBank. Database decision making is a process that becomes easier as your school gains more experience with it. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this quick pick.